up into my EPQ presentation. Art is a science. They're both attempts for humans to describe and understand um, the way we see the world. In 1997, a neuroimaging experiment was carried out. Medial temporal lobe above the thalamus in the brain controls all visual aspects of memory and different people respond to the stimuli in many different ways. It was proven that pictures are more memorable than words. The reason why I chose photography were the reasons that both science and art can be incorporated together as well as my natural passion for photography itself. It would be relevant nowadays, especially as, as um, global warming is increasing and especially as um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the environment has in, um, has actually calmed down and mother nature has healed. Um, environment is very relevant to this day as well. There are various types of contributors to environmental, environmental damage you wouldn't necessarily think about straight away. Heat and power generation, industrial facilities, agricultural waste, like um, waste burning, residential cooking, heating, lighting and polluting fuel, fuels as well. In my situation, it was incredibly difficult, difficult for me to be having access to massive gas stations and fill and being able to be in countries that have more air pollution than England, for example, being in China. The way I was researching this project was in taking inspiration from other artists. So there wasn't a set plan to this because I wanted to stay as creative as possible. So I think um, starting off with my artists and looking at what I could draw out for them, I just wanted to get started with what ideas I had initially and then slowly develop and progress my ideas. The, I started to look at my first artist, Piotr Kowalski, and I took inspiration. So Piotr Kowalski was a, part, a Polish comic book artist who looks at um, expressive forms of telling stories and narratives in his comic book work. I took the idea of expression in his work and tried to include that as inspiration to my work called Nils Udo. He's um, a sculpt to show the human history. He wants us to make us realise that nature is ultimately neither a conception of nor a representation, but quite simply we are art of which we are part of. I, he creates the combination of nature with mankind, which I'll get into when you see my final piece. Andy Goldsworthy was another artist I looked at. His intention, his intention has always been to understand the relationship with the land. The inspiration I can take from him is the way he uses contrast in his lighting and creating mood and pathetic fallacy with rain. So these are my initial ideas from the way um, I was inspired from Goldsworthy's work. Bring the um, sadness and the gloomy mood of how upset she looks from looking at the environment outside and how the destruction is. I was having trouble with this because I always... Um, the subject was unclear sometimes, and it was unclear that it was environmentally, environmental damage that I was portraying in my images. So here we are now, the importance of subject, the surrealistic approach with creating mystery from Goldsworthy ideas of using high contrast and black colours. So I created this art, and you can also see that the expression of the hand, which is what I created from, I took inspiration from Pyrotree's art, and I actually incorporated the expressive hand showing how um, humans are abusing their power. So to ex um, to further experiment my double exposure, sorry, my st incorporating different subjects, as it was difficult for me to be in a dangerous situations to capture um, environmental damage, I looked at an, a photography idea called double exposure and I used this, created this piece over here which was one of my favourites. The way the leaf represents that we are incorporating the part of nature and what we affect in the world is affecting human is what I wanted to show with my images. So the important effect of colour, there were many different aspects I had to include it in my, um, I had to look at in my work. But, um, I found a picture I took in Australia of the beach and I made the water red and I played around with the um, inversions of black and white and colour. This was a really really good idea because I could create that, um, the mood between um, darkness and showing the danger and destruction in a more artistic and more powerful way and I did that same with the animals showing that the water around the fish are actually being destroyed and harmed. Experimentation didn't work as well because the sub there was something missing in the images. You couldn't quite tell that the causation of the um, emotion shown from for example the kangaroo was directly by environmental damage. The kangaroo could just be sad. So I tried to incorporate my animal ideas into a triptych, which didn't work that well because um, triptychs are usually supposed to show a narrative or a story, and there was no clear storyline between my images. So double exposure with fire, I now use that image I had before, and I laid it, I laid the fire over the head, and this shows sort of the, um, the way that the humans, I use the human head to show like the power of humans and how we are abusing it with deforestation. Um, the water bottle one didn't quite work because 
it doesn't show the mass production of plastic affecting ocean it just was a singular subject and it just looks like the bottle was on fire so it didn't really work very well so the color wheel was an idea by Isaac Newton who he discovered um, the, the, the way we can incorporate complementary colors to create a more impactful image has worked together and the complementary just helped bring out the colors and you can see even though black and white was an important aspect to consider the black and white image didn't quite work in this scenario because the colors were just you couldn't quite tell it was fire and i feel like the color was important for this image fire into the people giving a reflection and i thought this was incredibly more emotional and powerful to the image because you can see through the eye that this the eye is looking directly at at the destruction right in front of us and the zip was a really good idea i could show of um how easy it is to unzip and unwind um, different perspectives and how easy that the things that are happening right in front of us are just right in front of us and then how easy that we zip that away. I think a collage to show the power of my images. When I did this it was it didn't work because it just made the work more confusing and it went off topic a little bit as you can see with the expressive faces and the fire you can't tell that that person is directly crying because the earth is like on fire and the deforestation is happening. The person just looks sad and they could show other emotions that maybe he's dealing with mental health problems or some things like that, people could interpret it very differently. The images are so unique and powerful on their own, this didn't work, so I did not carry on with the collage idea. So I reflected my work and I looked at the work that actually worked well. And I wanted to show perspective, mystery, and I wanted to give power. So I looked back at the first image that I found successful and I edited the zip eye onto the leaf of the eye. I into it and I overlaid the zip onto the leaf and I've twisted the concept of nature versus mankind and actually combined nature with mankind instead to create this powerful final piece. Every country thinks or feels the same way about environmental damage and was deforestation the right choice as maybe there's other, um, other um, pollutants that could have been more effective? Um, but maybe I'll have to spend up to a year conducting primary research on what people actually thought what environmental means to them. Many things I learned during this project, especially time management, I, the fact that I am um, not crammed, but the fact that I thought of my final piece idea a couple days before my deadline um, could have been easily avoided if I decided to if I decided to choose on an easier layout to start my project with, that would have given me more time to think about ideas and less stress about the formatting and the how I was going to actually write the investigation. I also learned um, a lot about how important it is to analyse sources. I didn't think, before I started the project, I didn't think that this would be as important but there's so much false news out there and false information that's easily misconcepted and conceived in like different ways that could be wrong so I think analysing the sources gave me an important skill of making sure that what I am writing in my work is accurate and relevant and reliable and from credible sources. Projects I I was confused whether to do a sketchbook or to do it on Word. On project, I had 10 different Word documents on my laptop and then when I got home, I started working on my, on my PC. I thought it would be easier, but it actually did it and make it, it made it much more confusing. So next time I would just have like to maybe use, um, just get, get cracking with just doing it online. And also I was having troubles with the formatting on Word and my text boxes would disappear and my images would go off. To um, solve this, I wish I had used like PowerPoint. Um, things I found out is that there, there is no right or wrong answer with photography and there's so many different ways you can capture different perspectives. Pollution is such a broad subject that there isn't just one way to do something and crying underwater photography as it's something that I wanted to consider. So as you can see it's estimated that plastic lines, ropes and fishing nets com compromise the 52% of the plastic mass and you wouldn't think that. You would think it's plastic, right? Um, if I had the expertise, equipment and more time, I would next further experiment and photograph ocean pollution. 71% of the earth is made up of water and the ocean is the majority of the environment as well as land, which you wouldn't necessarily think when you thought the ocean is one of the biggest, biggest parts of the environment. Perhaps getting deeper into the photography and the ocean would be the next step if I had more time. <clears throat> So in answering to my question, yes, there are many ways in photography can portray environmental damage. This was just one of the perspectives amongst many others. And through the reflection of the eyes are powerful and has demonstrated my process and my journey along with the zip. Overall, I am incredibly happy with my outcome. Thank you for listening.